What's up you guys, welcome back. Now in this video, we are going to be working on inverse function. But before we get into the exercises, let us first go through some basics that you have to know about this chapter. Okay, so inverse function. So on our previous video, we talked about the basics of function, right? To, to reduce confusion, I'll just say forward function. So previous video, we talked about forward function where there is an input and there is an output right the input is x and the output is fx and the function that relates the input to the output is the function okay basically so if let's say i got three here and i got eight here so the relationship is function lah. so three plus i can say plus five i get eight right so that's the function but if i change it opposite direction from uh, 8 to 3, now this is called inverse function. That means you're going the opposite direction. So when you go to the opposite direction, you see there's a difference. The forward function, the input is x, the output is fx. But now, because it is inverse, the x now becomes the output here. Okay, the inverse, the input for inverse function is the same as the output okay and the output for the inverse function the output becomes the input of the input of the forward function so i want you all to see the relationship these two are basically the same thing it's just that because one is forward function one is inverse function you get a different um, one is input one is output okay so this will be the output for the forward function but the input for the inverse function so in other words if i write in terms of a function we know that forward function when we have the input is 3 when the input is 3 the output is 8 correct but if i write in terms of inverse the inverse of 8 because now the 8 is the input right 8 is the input for the inverse so the inverse of 8 will give you 3 Okay, so you see it's actually opposite to each other. Okay, so the input for forward will become the output for the inverse. Okay, so this is what it means. So, how do we solve inverse function? So, if let's say you are given, let's say fx equals to x plus 5. Okay, so usually this is how a forward function is given. But how do you change this to inverse? So, remember I told you, output of the forward becomes the input of the inverse, right? So, see how we're going to solve this. Huh? So, first I'll change this to y first. Okay, to make it easier for us, we make it in, into y. Okay, so y is the output. x is the input for the forward function. Now, we want to change it to inverse function. So, we have to swap the two. Okay, because I said output for forward becomes input for inverse and vice versa so here becomes x here becomes y okay so now you've got this equation you want to rearrange this equation so that you get y as the subject y as the subject so you have x minus 5 equals to y so this y here since you have already swapped places right you already swap since you have already swapped so now this y here does not represent fx anymore it represents the inverse so this represents the inverse because i've already swapped the equation the y and the x is now so that means f inverse is equals to x minus 5 clear so this is how you do it okay i'll give you another example in case you didn't get what i was saying just now let's say we have fx equals to say x squared plus 5 Okay, so first step, I'm going to change this to become y, so that it's easier for us to, to write later. So y and the x, I'm going to swap places. So now the y becomes x, and the x square becomes y square. Okay, now I rearrange this such that I get y as the subject. So x minus 5 equals to y square, and then I shift the square, it becomes square root x minus y x minus 5 equals to y 
So from here we know that y is the inverse, right? So the equation will be f inverse equals to this square root x minus 5. So this is how you do inverse function. Okay, it's very straightforward. Now, besides that, there's also a few other things that you have to know. So on our previous video, we talked about domain and range, right? We talk about domain and range. So I've already taught you all how to do that in our previous video. So if you haven't, if you still don't know, you can check that out. But for now, I just want you to see the relationship. So we know that domain for forward, huh? we talk about forward first. This is forward function. That means the previous video one. Huh? So forward function, we know that domain is x and range is the possible y values, correct? Now, if we want to find for inverse, we can basically just swap places. So that means instead of solving, like drawing the graph or finding the, the actual inverse, we can actually just use back the, the domain for the forward and make it become the range for the inverse and vice versa. We can do this as well. Okay, so what this means is that for the inverse function, for the inverse function, the range of y becomes the domain and the domain of x for the forward becomes the range. Clear? Understand? So that's why I wrote here x because the x comes from the domain here. So the domain, okay, let me write back. Huh? This is range, this is domain. So let me give you an example. So let's say you found that the forward, okay, Okay, ignore this first. Let's say the question asks you to find for the domain, domain and range of the inverse function. Okay, we want to talk about inverse. Huh? The domain and the range of the inverse function. So instead of finding it all over again, what you can do is you can use the range of the forward function forward, sorry, no space here. And for the domain, for the range of inverse, you can use the domain of the forward function. Clear? Never mind, later we have some examples and then you'll understand what I'm saying. Okay, so for in the meantime, just understand that the domain for the forward becomes the range for the inverse and the range of the forward becomes the uh, domain for the uh, inverse. Clear? So that's what it is. Now, Apart from that, you must also know how to draw graph, okay? If the question asks you to draw graph, now how are you going to draw? So there's a relationship between the forward and the inverse. So if let's say you have a graph, let's say you've got a graph like this. Oops, sorry. A graph that looks like this, let's say lah, okay? So let's say this is your forward function, f, fx, okay? Now, how do you draw the inverse? You have to understand one thing. The forward function graph and the inverse graph, they are actually reflected. Reflected at what, uh, what, what, what is the mirror, right? It's reflected at y equals to x. Okay, so this line here is y equals to x. So it is reflected on this line. So where it, how it appears is, it will reflect like this. So, oh wait, sorry something like this okay i mean as long as you understand what i'm drawing but basically it will reflect on this line so okay so in other words this one becomes your inverse function okay so in other words instead of redrawing what you can do is you can draw the forward and reflect at the y equals to x line to get your inverse function clear so i can give you another example let's say you've got a straight line okay let's say you've got here um, let's say it's like this oh wait okay nah. here is four uh, sorry negative four here is two this is your forward function okay how are you going to draw your inverse so first you draw your reflection here the reflection line y equals to x okay so now what you're going to do is, 
you're just going to reflect this. So here is negative 4, right? So if you reflect across the y equals to x line, it becomes, okay, it comes here, negative 4, okay? So you just basically draw like this, lah. sorry. So I reflect like this, okay, so it appears here, it's a negative 4. Then you do the same for x, sorry, the 2 here. So 2 is here, right? So you're going to draw your straight line across. Something like this. So this will be your inverse function. Okay, so basically what I'm trying to say is the forward and the inverse, they are reflecting at the y equals to x. Okay, they are ref it's a reflection across that y equals to x line. Okay, all right, let's, let us look at some exercises here. So question A, find the inverse, right? So fx equals to 7x minus 2. So same thing, we're going to make fx become the y. So y equals 7x minus 2. Then we're going to swap places between the x and y. So here becomes x, 7y minus 2. Okay, then we're going to make y a subject. So y a subject is going to be x plus 2 equals to 7y and y is equals to x plus 2 over 7. So y here becomes your inverse. So f inverse is equals to x plus 2 over 7. Okay. All right, let's look at the next one. Question B. gx equals to 3x plus 4 over 2. So now we're going to make this become y. And we are going to swap places between x and y. So x equals to 3y plus 4 over 2. So now I'm going to make y as a subject. So I get 2x and then I'm going to shift the 4. So minus 4. Then divide by 3. Okay, I'm doing a bit faster now. Eh? So the y is your inverse. So instead of f, I need to write g. g inverse equals to 2x minus 4 over 3 okay next question c question c is uh, hx equals to x minus 1 square so now we're going to make it become y and then we're going to swap places so x equals to y minus 1 square now we're going to shift make y become the subject so you're going to get square root x plus 1 equals to y. So in other words, your h inverse becomes square root x plus 1. But you have to write the domain, right? Because x here can only be more than or equal to 0. Okay? It cannot be a negative number. Otherwise, this inverse function will not exist. Okay? Alright, last one. Question D fx equals to x square plus 4. Okay, so we're going to make it become y. And then, swap places. x equals to y square my plus 4, sorry. And then, we are going to rearrange. So we get y equals to um, x minus 4, and then you square root. Okay, I'm just going to shift, do it faster now. Eh? So let me write here. So your inverse function will be square root x minus 4. But what is the domain? So remember on the previous uh, video, I taught you how to find the domain, right? We know that when there is square root, inside the square root must always be more than or equal to 0. Correct? So that means x must be more than or equal to 4. Because why? If you put any number less than 4, you will get a negative value in here, then it becomes math error. So this one has to be, x must be more than or equal to 4. Okay, so this is the first one. Let us look at another question here. So this question, they're asking for you to find the, the first, the question A asks to find inverse. Then question B is asking you to sketch the graph. Okay, so we're going to do this together. So inverse is quite straightforward. 3x minus 4, 
and then we make it become y equals to 3x minus 4 swap places x equals to 3y minus 4 then we rearrange make y as a subject so y equals to x plus 4 divided by 3 so your y here is sorry the inverse inverse function inverse f becomes x plus 4 over 3 so this is the answer for question a now what about question b now question b is asking you to sketch so you don't have to really sketch this because remember i told you it's actually the reflection of this correct so let us do this together so fx is this right oh sorry minus 4 so we can find the the intercepts we can do the intercepts first so we know that when x is 0, when x is 0, um, y is equals to negative 4. When y is 0, x is equals to, um, let's see, 4, 4 over 3. Okay, we get 4 over 3. So when you sketch your graph, x, y, so... Your x-intercept, when x is 0, y is 4 over 3. Let's say 4 over 3 is here. And when y is 0, x is equals to... When, wait, when y is 0, x 0... Oh, wait, I made a mistake. When x is 0, y is equals to negative 4. So negative 4 is down here. My bad. Then when x is 4 over 3 y is 0 so it's somewhere let's say i put it here okay so you're going to draw your line let me see if i can draw okay so your line should look something like this okay and then don't forget it's going to reflect on the y equals to x line right so y equals to x i use the red one here something like this okay let me see i can now uh, okay something like this so now you this is you know that the first function first line here is your forward function right this is your fx okay this is y equals to x now you want to reflect so in the easy way to reflect is just to find the the points so this should be somewhere here this will be negative four and then this one also can reflect so it's just okay sorry my line is quite bad here but you know what i mean right so you just find the reflection here will be 4 over 3 then you just draw your draw the line so it should look something like this with a Okay. It should look something like this because it has to so it's supposed to touch here. Okay, so here's 4 over 3. Okay, so it should look something like this. So this will be your f inverse. Okay, if you're not sure, you can also plot the graph by yourself. Okay, but because this equation is quite simple, so you can actually plot it by yourself. So let's say we do it together. So your f inverse is this. We can use this to check okay so x and y when x is 0 y is equals to 4 over 3 and when y is 0 when y is 0 you get negative 4 okay so we see here it's the same thing when x 0 y is 4 over 3 when y when y is 0 x is negative 4 yeah so you actually you did it actually it is actually correct lah, okay so it's basically a reflection of the forward function on this y equals to x line okay so yeah that's how you solve inverse function so that is all for today i hope you find this useful and hope to see you on my next video